Hello Harry Potter fans, Peter Kenneth here. Welcome back to the Potter Collector channel where we are a community of collectors. A Potter Collector community member pointed out that I never did a review of the Philosopher's Stone House Editions published by Bloomsbury. So today we are going to look at Philosopher's Stone, the very first of the colorful books that Bloomsbury is releasing. All right, let's set the paperbacks aside for a moment. Now these books started out as 20th anniversary editions and Bloomsbury was planning to release all seven books on the 20th anniversary of that book. That only lasted through Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and then the books kind of changed into becoming house editions. So they're still releasing all seven books, but starting at Goblet of Fire, they just became house editions. I actually prefer them just to be released as house editions because we get them a lot sooner. If we had to wait for the 20th anniversary of the other books, we would have to wait seven more years to have the last three books. They just released Goblet of Fire, so we would have to wait another three years for Order of the Phoenix, but Order of the Phoenix is actually coming out next month. So for me, I'm thrilled that they kind of rebranded them in a sense. Now, normally I go in order. I do Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, then Slytherin. I'm gonna start with Ravenclaw today. Now the artwork for these books was done by Levi Pinfold. And the artwork that Levi Pinfold did for Philosopher's Stone is the crest of each house. Now on the later book, so Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, and Goblet of Fire, we see this same crest on the back of the books. So this is the first time that we see these crests done by Levi. And on Ravenclaw, it looks like a swan and a fox, an owl and a raven are four different animals surrounding the crest and then in the center is an eagle. And I think that the animals represent different traits of a Ravenclaw. So wit, for example, uh, I would think the fox, kind of witty. Um, wisdom is the owl learning, maybe the raven and the, the swan. A very beautiful crest and the color blue is fantastic. At the base it says Ravenclaw and then there's an icon at the bottom that is different for all of the different houses, but for Ravenclaw is an open book. On the spine is that same eagle that we see inside of the crest. What's cool about the spines of these house editions is the animal, in this case the eagle, changes at each book. So as you see as the books go along, the eagle is essentially taking flight. So that's one aspect of these that I really like is that the animal is in a different position for each, each book. On the back cover of Philosopher's Stone, the Ravenclaw edition, we have the Grey Lady. And then on the inside of these editions is some additional information about the particular house that the book is representing. So there's some information about Ravenclaw House in this book, as well as a portrait of Rowena Ravenclaw herself. And then it says Ravenclaw and introduction. And while we are kind of out of order, it has the Ravenclaw portion of the Sorting Hat song. Or yet in Wise Old Ravenclaw, if you've a ready mind, where those of wit and learning will always find their kind. And then there are quite a few pages talking about Ravenclaw relics and the, the Ravenclaw ghost, which is the Grey Lady. All of these house editions feature a map of the Hogwarts grounds done by Levi Pinfold. And then when you go to the back of the books, there's some more information. There's a Hogwarts quiz. There's actually quite a bit of stuff here. Okay, this looks like the entrance to the Ravenclaw common room. I've never seen this before. I don't know how I've never seen this before, but here's a picture of the entrance to the Ravenclaw common room. This is way too cool. Other information talks about the common room, memorable Ravenclaw students. So Luna Lovegood is, is one of them, Gilderoy Lockhart. And then there is a featured character in each of the different house editions and in this one, one, we have the head of Ravenclaw House, who is Professor Phileas Flitwick. These are must-haves for Harry Potter book collections, in my opinion. What's nice is the paperback version is identical to the hardcover when it comes to the information on the inside. The only difference is the cover. So you see that this is more of a blue with black accents and then this is black with blue accents. What's cool about these editions that I've talked about in previous videos is Bloomsbury is alternating colors. So for Philosopher's Stone, the paperback edition, it was blue, and then Chamber of Secrets was black, and then Prison of Azkaban was blue and what that does is it creates a striped pattern on your shelves so when all seven books are released we'll have a nice 
blue, black, blue, black, blue, black, blue striped pattern. And then the opposite is true for the hardcover versions. So the hardcover of Chamber of Secrets was blue with black accents. But back to the paperback, the only difference is the cover itself. Nothing on the inside is, is different. So you still have all of that information that is found in the hardcover in the paperback version. Another thing I like about the hardcovers, you have a really nice striped pattern in the particular house colors, whereas with the paperbacks, they just have a solid color. All right, let's take a look at Slytherin. So here is the Slytherin crest done by Levi Pinfold. And the animals on here in the center is a snake, and then there is a peacock, a half rooster, a half lizard. That must be some sort of mythical, magical creature. If you know what that is, leave a comment down below, because I don't know what it is. And then it looks like a tiger and swan at the top. Then a half moon at the top as well. Slytherin house. And then the relic or item featured on the bottom of the crest is a crown. Then we see the traits of a Slytherin, pride, ambition, and cunning. And on the back is the bloody baron. So the ghost of Slytherin house. Let's take a look at the inside, or actually, so the book underneath the dust jacket is just a solid black book. And then the spine has the title as well as Slytherin edition and then JK Rowling's name here in green foiling. It would be blue foiling for the Ravenclaw edition and red for the Gryffindor and yellow for Hufflepuff. There's the portrait of one of the founders. Salazar Slytherin, and the Slytherin portion of the Sorting Hat song, or perhaps in Slytherin you'll make your real friends, those cunning folks use any means to achieve their ends. That's not super true for a Slytherin. We don't use any means to achieve our ends. House Relic, uh, Salazar Slytherin's ring, and the house ghost is the Bloody Baron. We have that map of the Hogwarts grounds. And then in the back of the book, let's take a look at the featured character. I'm guessing it's gonna be Severus Snape because it is Severus Snape who is head of Slytherin House because we saw Phileas Flitwick in the Ravenclaw edition. But here is the portrait of Professor Severus Snape. And then I also wanna see the door to the common room if that is inside this book as well. It is. It's at the end of a long hallway in the dungeons. Actually looks like a cool hallway. And then here is the paperback version, very bright green and the back cover. All right, I have Gryffindor next. Here is that Gryffindor crest. And in the center is a lion. There's a unicorn on this side and what looks like a griffin on the other side. There are no animals up top, just some branches. At the top, there's a sun with a face in it. It says Gryffindor at the bottom. And the, the item is what looks like a bull. So there's a bull, maybe courage and bravery. Is that like a, a bull symbol? So courage and bravery and determination listed at the base of this book here. And then Nearly Headless Nick is featured on the back and he is the Gryffindor house ghost. All right, let's take a look at the inside. And the founder of Gryffindor house and one of the Hogwarts founders, Godric Gryffindor, nice portrait of him. And the Sorting Hat song, you might belong in Gryffindor, where dwell the brave at heart, their daring nerve and chivalry set Gryffindors apart. The relic is going to be the sword of Gryffindor. And the house ghost, Sir Nicholas de Mimsey Porpington, also known as Nearly Headless Nick. That map is in there as well. Here's the entrance to Gryffindor house through the portrait of the fat lady. Love that and love the little steps that lead up to the portrait. And the head of house is Minerva McGonagall. Here is the paperback version of Gryffindor and the back cover. Now what's nice about the colored versions is the black accents really pop out of the colored versions. Whereas sometimes it's a little bit harder to see the detail if the background itself is black and the accents are colored. Especially for Gryffindor, it's better to have a colored background and then black detail. Now they stopped putting these 20th anniversary stickers on the books after Philosopher's Stone, so Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban did not feature this sticker. But what it did say was 20 20th anniversary edition at the base of the book. This is Chamber of Secrets. They just got rid of the sticker and added the wording 20th anniversary edition. And then at Goblet of Fire, it changed to Hogwarts House edition. All right, last but certainly not least is Hufflepuff. And one of the things I love about the Hufflepuff crest is there's a beehive and like a bumblebee on the crest. So we have the badger in the center, of course. On one side, we have a warthog. The other side, we have a wolf. At the top looks like a dog goat 
what is that animal? Someone tell me what that animal is. I'm not sure what it is. There's a snail as well as a bumblebee and then a bird flying away on the right side. It says Hufflepuff at the base and then a hand being held up. I wonder if that's supposed to symbolize like patience or something. Very beautiful yellow color. And I think for Hufflepuff, it's probably better to have a black background. You can really see the detail on this book. And the ghost on the back is the Fat Friar or the Hufflepuff ghost. All right, let's take a look at Helga Hufflepuff's portrait. There she is. Now, don't you think that Helga Hufflepuff would have just been like the sweetest lady ever? All right, the Sorting Hat song. You might belong in Hufflepuff where they are just and loyal. Those patient Hufflepuffs are true and unafraid of toil. Helga Hufflepuff's cup is the relic. And then of course, as I mentioned, the Fat Friar is the ghost who is a cheerful fat monk dressed in monk's robes. All right, let's take a look at the portrait of Professor Sprout, who is the head of Hufflepuff House. Here she is, Professor Sprout herself. And I'm excited to see the Hufflepuff common room entry door. And here is the entrance to the Hufflepuff common room. Here's the paperback, and I think I take back what I said about the hardcover with the black background. No, I think that they both just pop out. So whether it's a black background or a colored background, I think the artwork just pops on the Hufflepuff version better than any of the other house editions because of the yellow color. But here is that bright yellow book, bright yellow text block, and bright yellow back cover. Normally, I prefer hardcover books, but in these editions, I prefer the paperbacks. The quality, in my opinion, is better on the paperbacks than the hardcovers. The cover on the paperback feels more premium. It has like a velvety feel to it, whereas this is kind of smooth and almost feels cheap. The paper of the dust jacket doesn't feel as nice. And what's weird is I think it might just be like a color thing because the dust jacket on Chamber of Secrets and Goblet of Fire, those are the ones where they're colored and have black accents. Those feel like this material. And then the paperbacks, which have a black background, are a little little bit closer to this feel. So I'm guessing it's like a color thing. Apart from the dust jacket and the front cover feel, they just overall feel like higher quality compared to the hardcovers. Well, those are the Philosopher's Stone 20th Anniversary House Editions. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any of these books. If you are collecting all of the houses, are you collecting them in hardcover or paperback? Let me know what you are doing. For me, I'm collecting hardcover and paperback of all four houses for all seven books and cannot wait to see all of them on my shelves. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, Order of the Phoenix is coming out next month. If you are watching this in the future, June of 2020 is when Order of the Phoenix was released. And they released Goblet of Fire earlier this year in 2020, which makes me think that they are going to release two books next year. So by the end of 2021, my guess is we will have all seven books in all four houses, which for me as a book collector is very, very exciting. Now, if you would like to start collecting these or if you are missing some of them, I left links in the description below to all four of the different house books in hardcover and paperback. If you have any questions about Harry Potter, Harry Potter collecting, or anything else, please feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also join the Potter Collector community on Instagram at the Potter Collector or on Twitter at Potter Collector. Now it's time to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, keep collecting. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, welcome. You can subscribe right up here. You can also look at some previously posted content down here. If you have any questions about Harry Potter books or collecting, please feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help. But for now, I must go. See you next time. Whoa, where'd he go?